This is a 1976 FJ40 wiring harness bench test. The first thing I like to do is I like to turn the key to the key on position. You'll hear the seatbelt alarm go off, and then I test the turn signals. The left side and the right side. Then I like to test the hazard circuit like to make sure that everything is blinking as it should. Next, I'll test the windshield wiper motor on the low position and then on the high position. Next, I'll check the heater blower circuit. I pull it twice and that goes to the high mode and you'll see the light turn on. The low mode, I do not have the light hooked up there, but it does work. On this particular customer's harness, they're installing an EFI, so I routed a blue and red wire near the glove box for where that sub-harness will, will live. And uh, the key-on circuit is right here on the actual uh, fuse block it's in this position here while we're talking about the fuse block I like to recommend when you're doing a harness to make sure that you clean very well all of the fuse terminals on the block both both sides and once you've done that you should put some deoxid on them not just on the fuse block but in all of the terminals and you remove the uh, connectors, make sure you clean the terminals well, and then use deoxin on them. Prevents corrosion. Next, I like to start with brand new fuses. These are 20 amp and 15 amp Stanley made, made in Japan fuses. They're color indexed, so they can be easily identified to know which ones you may need in the future. You'll notice a few lights. The lights that are blinking, this here is your your fuel sender is giving out seven volts controlled by a regulator in your cluster. The same thing over here is uh, seven volts and that is for your temperature sender. This steady on light is your oil pressure and that is controlled by your cluster as well. Um, another light that I'll point out is when you turn it to the start position you'll see another light go on and that is your starter. Now we're going to test the headlights and the running lights. So you pull it to the first position and you'll notice the running lights have turned on. I'm using license plate lamps as my test lamps uh, for the side marker lights in the back. And those work. Now I'm going to turn on the headlight which is full pull all the way out and you'll notice two test lamps, one here and one over here. That is the headlamp. I don't have the high beam bulb set up, but it does work. I've tested it. The other thing I'll point out is this little LED light that goes into the OEM light switch and it illuminates the knob. The next thing I'll test is the brake light and then the reverse light. So we'll test the reverse light now, where you put the car into gear, into reverse, the light goes on, when you take it out of gear, the light goes off. Now the brakes. We'll connect the switch, it's disconnected so it won't drain the battery. And then you step on the brake, brake light goes on, functioning as it should. The only other thing I'm going to point out is on this particular customer's harness, we replaced the rear section of the rear harness and we installed Sumitomo five pin waterproof connectors. These things are awesome. They're easy to uh, take apart uh, and they accommodate the fifth ground wire which goes all the way through the harness. It goes out to the front cowl over here, 
and it is um, easy to mount to a nice clean spot on the engine block or somewhere down in the frame. So this is a 1976 FJ40 wiring harness bench test. If you have any questions, let me know.